Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Krebs Coho replay cast. This time around we're going to be doing a 1v1 on Wolfasia. Alright guys, so Wolfasia! I can't believe how strange that is for me to say that, but I actually believe that this is going to be the first game ever that I've actually pronounced this uh, the name of this map right. Wolfasia! Obviously I'm not going to pronounce it like that all the time. I think I'm actually quite comfortable with calling it Wolfies. At least I'm not calling it Wolfies. Because that would be a bit too uh, Englishized if you want to call it. Um, so I'll call it Wolfies. That's, that's a nice name. Uh, but the proper pronunciation, as you guys are probably aware of by now, is Vufasia. Right, so what are we going to be looking at today, guys? Um, we're going to be looking at two Americans, it looks like. Yep, Piss Midget. Oh god, I can't believe I just said that. Uh, Train Reborn, has his teammate, versing two PE players. Uh, ASII Black Tiger and ASII, where the heck is he? ASII Ghost Division! Right, now you guys, uh, I to be honest, I don't really know much about these players. I obviously know about the uh, guilds, the clans, the ASII, the Reborn. Obviously everybody knows about them, but the individual players, I'm not exactly too sure about them. Um, however, Ghost Division, I'm guessing ASII Ghost Division must have got his name from, well, maybe you guys are guessing it by now, but from the band Sabotan. So, if you guys don't know about him, uh, for the next few seconds, I will be playing Ghost Division by Sabotan! They are the And I hope you guys enjoyed that slight um, bit of music there. And that is Ghost Division uh, by Sable Tan. Sable Tan is quite a popular um, power uh, power rock, I think that's what you call them, maybe power metal um, band. And well, they play music that is based on World War II wars. And I believe some uh, World War One as well. But mostly World War II, and they're a pretty cool band. So check them out, guys. They're uh, nice to listen to. <laughs> anyway. So let's uh, take a look at what's going to be going on in the field. Well, lots of American stuff, lots of PE stuff. So two Americans versus two PE, a matchup we don't usually see. Now I'm not trying to rhyme, however I believe it is time that we continue <laughs> on with what else is going on. Uh, so loads of PGs, uh, taking a bunker in the train station over here, and also some Americans just trying to capture away at the right hand side of the, ma uh, the map. Rather than actually pushing forward into the uh, left turn side, they're just capping away here, but most of the fighting is going on along the right hand side. What we usually see on Wolfies is that a lot of people like to capture the middle. I'm not exactly sure why that's not happening in this game with the Americans. It seems like the PE were quite content on that. In fact, they were so content they took bunker in the train station. And that's actually a very common uh, tactic on Wolfies that a lot of people like to do this. Uh, because they like to stretch on over to this fuel point. And by just having this control of the fuel point in the center here, you put yourself in a very, very good tactical position. Because if you look here, this is the crossroads where uh, a lot of um, battling usually happens. This gives you a great advant uh, vantage point to look over on the left side of the map and also towards the center and if you can actually manage to capture this train station here it puts you in a very good position of actually uh, being such a nuisance to your opponent because this train station over here is so close to the Americans if you can capture it this severely hampers their ability to even um, come out of their base I mean they can still go over here but that is just diverting uh, a longer journey so let us see let's see what else is going on we've got a jeep out on the field absolutely love jeeps jeeps are just so harassive um, a previous game that I was watching uh, was actually a combination of a Brit and American versus 2P now I, I obviously I won't go into the specifics of what happened but uh, to be honest jeeps are just perfect against a uh, Vermont especially where MGs can come out um, basically jeeps are absolutely perfect that they can circle around them and flank them obviously take them out harass them and so the MG is sort of negated in a way taking up positions over here we've got two PGs that are ready very 
close. I'm, I don't like what the Americans are doing here by trying to close in on the PGs when the PGs already had the cover advantage. Look at that. Four or five guys already dead. Um, not worth that fight. Uh, what we saw was that the Gewehr 43 on one of those PG squads and also just a normal PG over here. It's just too much to deal with, especially if you're going to be running into them. Uh, obviously, uh, all the pros know this and all the intermediates and a lot of obviously beginners, but for the brand new people to the game, obviously when you're going to be taking on somebody close to range, they're going to have a very much so higher um, rate of accuracy than if they were firing on you from long range. So if you're going to be closing in on that, come on, you really got to be thinking about maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should try going elsewhere, maybe I should just wait until they come out of cover. Like what the Americans are doing, what they've done is actually split up their forces. We've got, oh my god, an armored car. Not from the Americans, obviously, but we have a WSC and uh, barracks, combined arms, obviously, because it's 2v2. And so that's why we have a sniper on the field. Sniper, perfect choice to be countering the... Um, the PGs, obviously snipers are the one of the most viable tactics against PGs. Two armored cars already out, so what does this mean? We've had a leapfrog from the Kampfgruppe company up to the Panzer Jaeger command. Very common tactic with the Panzer uh, Elite as well. So this means what we have here is one armored car by ASI I, I Ghost Division and also one by Black Tiger. This puts them in a very uh, <laughs> great unison of arms. Both of them have gone for armored cars and what has basically happened is that we have a ma majority map control for the PE at the moment. What this puts the Americans in an awkward position if we're looking at the Americans uh, fuel income is plus 20. That's okay, it's not superb though. Um, it could be slightly better if they had captured this uh, center point. What these armored cars is going to be doing is delaying the uh, oncoming of uh, Greyhounds or anti-tank guns. Now you might be thinking, okay, how are they going to be delaying that? Well, because they are going to be killing so many men. The thing about the armored cars, uh, obviously not directly hampering the... Um, uh, hampering the... AT guns and the motor pole coming out by depriving the fuel points. Obviously, they're not doing that, but the armored cars, what they will be doing is killing these riflemen, forcing the Americans to have to reinforce them and spend manpower on them. Obviously, the manpower is another essential component to actually getting those AT guns and the Greyhounds. So, if you do not have, if you don't have that essential component of the manpower and the uh, and the fuel to actually go for the motor pole, then you can't get it. It's simple as that. You cannot get it you have no counters for the armored cars and when you've got so many of this this is just this is horrid a horrid horrid uh, position to be in for the um for the Americans, there are so many armored cars here. They're using their um, ability, oh god, overdrive, I believe it is, uh, to just get the heck on out of there and just get away. Basically, when they're damaged, they need to get repaired, and so that's what they're doing. Um, it's it's such an awkward position for the Americans because as soon as they try to come out of anywhere, bam, they're going to be met with these uh, armored car bullets. And now, just look at this, the Americans have upgraded for bars, and this is what puts them in a very weird position, because they need the bars to count to the PGs, um, likewise, if they don't have, uh, if they went for those bars, then it delays their progression to going for a motor pull, and so it's really a very, very weird position to be in. Do you want bars to counter the PGs, or do you want to wait until you can get AT guns and counter the armored cars? My personal opinion is that the fuel should be sp uh, been spent on AT guns um, to actually take out these armored cars. I mean, riflemen with their normal rifles will probably be enough to uh, at least hold off the PGs. However, these armored cars are really putting a major dent in the Americans. Look at this! We've got a jeep just going down. We've had multiple men fall down to the ground. We've also had a weapons crew here, a gunner crew, MG uh, crew, just go down from these armored cars, just being gunned down as they were retreating. And oh my god, these PE are really, really on the bat. As soon as they are able to, they are getting out every single counter. This is eight minutes into, almost nine minutes into the game, and we already have a Martyr 3 unlocked and built by uh, Ghost Division. That is crazy. So we've got perfect counters for everything. We've got perfect anti-infantry. We've got perfect anti-tank. Uh, that Martyr is obviously going to be great at taking on uh, MA armored cars, and no doubt there will probably be a, uh, at least one more Martyr sometime in this game. 
Um, if, because obviously it wouldn't be a great idea to have just one martyr by itself, right? You might as well at least have two, so you don't get circled. How are the Americans going to work around this? Well, they're probably going to avoid mo the most conflicts over here. I mean, this is just going to be an absolute death pit over here. I mean, just it's just going to be too hard to counter. What we do luckily have is um, the anti-tank gun finally out by uh, Midget. I'm not going to say his full name. <laughs> it's a bit crude. Well, piss midget, why not? Um, he's got his anti-tank gun. This is what they really, really need. If we're looking at the tactical map, look at this, guys. Um, it just looks like the Americans have a small peninsula uh, um, pushing out into the center, and that's just about it. They really do not have that much income at the moment. Plus 16 munitions, plus 15 in terms of fuel. It's such a bad, bad position to be in. This AT gun is going to be the most important thing on the field right now to actually counter these armored cars. Um, however, the PE already have freaking mortar half-tracks out. So this is what I mean. A lot of people love to go for that um, for the uh, camp group a log <laughs> logistic company. I don't know why he's going for that. He's going. Uh, a lot of people like to go for the camp group of company and they go straight for that Panzer Jaeger command, just so that they can um, leapfrog up to the armor command armored cars first, and then they can possibly back tech to get in some mortar half tracks. Just use this combined arms because as soon as the armored cars are out. Okay, well you're thinking, what is the best uh, counter against armored cars? Hmm, I'll go for AT guns. Yeah, you can go for AT guns, no problem. But then at that point, mor mortar half-tracks will be out, and look at that, they will be countering those AT guns. So we've got two of them on the field, a squad of men going down, not looking good for the Americans. Such a bad place to be. The uh, sniper is just trying to retreat out of there. He's already veterancy 2, so 8 kills. Very well done. He's going to be a very uh, hardy sniper. A lot more health. Going to be hard to hit. Uh, going to be a lot harder to spot, for one. Um, next veterancy, he's going to be able to run during camouflage, so it's going to be very, very cool to see a sniper like that, veterancy 3 si sniper. We've got flanking flame engineers trying to counter the PGs over here, who have managed to capture one of the bars from a fallen rifleman squad, and <laughs> really not looking good for the Americans. The PG luckily, however, getting out of there just before he was uh, going to get mulled down by those flames. We've got a rifleman bar on the ground and also that retreating engineer squad going down. There is so much action happening on the field at the moment. This is so hard to take in. I think what might be a good idea is if we get a little bit of a panoramic view of what is going on in the field at the moment. Look at this destruction going on. We've got uh, men going in through the center towards rampaging with their MP44s, uh, rampaging right into the right Men. We've also got, I believe, what was an armored car is still alive? Okay, fair enough. It looked like it had a damaged engine. Oh no, sorry, I think it was a Greyhound that I was looking at. Um, hmm, the Greyhound just managed to get out of there, luckily. And we've also got that Martyr that was destroyed, so I didn't actually manage to see that. Very unfortunate, but there's just so much action going on the field, it's hard to actually take in everything that is happening. I think these panoramic views might be a better idea just to see what's going on. Um, let's take a look. But look at this, look at this. It's just the armored car is so hard to uh, uh, take on for the Americans. However, the very the one good thing is that the Americans have these uh, AT guns. This is their step, their uh, door, their window, whatever you want to call it, to actually making a comeback. And that is what's happening. We've got the points being ta retaken by the Americans. Um, so some M MG guns in the back just providing support. We've also got some uh, snipers that are obviously going to be countering the PGs and just draining the PE of their manpower. So what we saw a little bit earlier and still going on is those armored cars draining the uh, MP, the manpower of the riflemen. And what we're going to be seeing as well with the snipers is draining the manpower of the PE. So I love seeing that sort of stuff. It's just trying to hassle your opponent as much as possible. If they don't have that manpower, it severely delays their teching and also building more units. Um, so these snipers are absolutely perfect for that. 13 kills on this sniper, just probably a little bit more kills than he will be able to uh, actually get veterancy 3. Incendiary round coming down from the mortar half track. 
almost taking out this AT gun, but surprisingly, the AT gun is hardly taking any damage. That's quite surprising. Uh, loads of flanking MP44 squads over here, just barely managing to take out that uh, rifleman squad. Just a few more bullets could easily have killed it, but instead they're going to be falling back. Because, well, God knows why. Probably snipers and MGs. Not looking good for them. Look at this. Oh my God. This PG squad. Instantly in two shots. This is what I mean about the snipers. Instantly two shots. Only a third of their squads left. It's just so hard to take on. Only viable counter against uh, getting against these snipers is perhaps um, getting armored cars, chasing them down. Uh... <laughs> scout cars but then again it's so hard to do when they're supported by mgs at guns and riflemen with bars um so all that the uh, the pe have left is just a bunch of lightly armored vehicles they have mortar half tracks uh a martyr but you gotta wonder what the heck happened to all the armored cars there's two there and two there there we go so that's where the armored cars are Train Reborn, what he has is three riflemen and two engineers, that is really not that much. Uh, Midget has a lot more, he's got three snipers, MG, uh, two AT guns, a Greyhound, and a engineer squad. So he has uh, almost twice as much as Train Reborn. And what else does Black Tiger has? have? Black Tiger has a load of stuff. He has just absolutely loads. He's got MP44 uh, PGs. He's got armored cars. He's got, I believe, uh, mortar half tracks and also cat and crats somewhere around the field. Probably just capping away. Um, no idea. If we look at the left hand side of the field, I mean, this is what it's like. It's just pretty much in the hands of the PE. We've got. Um, Scorcher of Tactics selected by one of the PE players. I believe it must be Ghost Division. Yes, no, 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 he, that's not him. It must be Black Tiger then. Yeah, it's Black Tiger. He's gone for Scorched Earth and he has uh, booby trapped that, uh, that strategic point. So it's quite a funny thing. A lot of people when they go for Scorched Earth is that they like to invest their first two CPs in going along the left hand side of Scorched Earth so that they can get the booby trap building and booby trap the points, uh, strategic points. Then what they might do is either continue on to sector artillery or they might go down along the right hand side and work for that uh, Hummel. The Hummel. The Hummel should I say. I believe the Hummel. The Hummel. <laughs> God, I can't even say it right. The Hummel, I believe, is uh, meant to be like a bumblebee or something like that. And it's pretty cool that the Germans had such fantastic names um, for their for their vehicles. For example, the Panthers and the and the uh, God, I can't even think of what else. The Ferdinand. Well, the Ferdinand in this is not in this game. It is in World of Tanks. But anyway, that's pretty cool that the. Um, that the Germans had such creativeness in their in their names. So loads and loads of destruction on the field. I'm really not too sure what to even look at. We've got an immobilized uh, Greyhound over here just being countered by most likely the light AT half-track, yes. And we've also got mortar half-tracks damaging the <laughs> engines of not only the Greyhound but also their own Kettencrad, which is invisible. I love this. Nobody can even spot it. The AT guns are just so bad at spotting anything that they can't even see a Kettencrad that is literally right in front of them. This Kettencrad, oh my god. Just being so perfect in scouting. Maybe if they had some riflemen or something nearby, then they could easily reveal it. But this Kankran is providing the site necessary for those uh, mortar half tracks. This is the sort of thing that you don't really see in beginner replays. Uh, and even even intermediate replays. Uh, it's just this thought process of, you know, my mortar half tracks can't really see anything. I'm just going to blindly throw some mortar shells and see if it kills anyone. Well, in more expert games, what they'll actually do is use stuff to scout. Maybe men, but like the uh, like Ghost Division has done, he's going to use a camouflage Kettencrad. So pretty cool that he's actually doing that. And this is what's being so annoying. He's probably not even... Uh, the American Train Reborn is probably thinking, How the heck is he seeing me and knowing exactly where my uh, AT guns are? He's just constantly hitting me. It's so annoying. Um, well, it's just because there's a camouflage Kettencrad. And a lot of times, uh, p uh, players, the Americans, won't even realize that until they actually watch the replay um, when it is over. So we've got a medic station coming down from Train Reborn, and a second one as well. Quite an interesting choice. I'm guessing he's going to be doing this 
um, so that he can have a total of four medics on the field so that they're constantly picking up the dead so you know you might be thinking ten, uh, two is enough and yeah it usually is but if there's going to be loads of conflicts on this side and just loads of casualties uh, by having those four medics on the field you not only are able to pick up more guys but but you also um in a way have a greater force for your opponent to deal with because a lot of people when um what they like to do is kill the medics if you've got four it just makes it a lot harder to actually stop all of them so we have some flanking rifleman squads just moving along the center side but the PE sort of seem like the on, they're on the back foot on the center, however pushing in on the right hand side. Hmm. Pretty cool to be seeing all this stuff. We've also got strategic point being cancelled, or an observation, uh, observation post being cancelled by train reboard. Obviously not wanting to build that there because that'll be a little bit silly. IMO. IMO. Um, because it'll probably get destroyed. So we've got an oh my god! The engineers being burned to death, a whole engineer squad being burned to death there in that incendiary um, round. What they should have done is retreated rather than trying to walk out of there because that incendiary burns really fast. Surprisingly, oh my god, that uh, rifleman squad almost died as well, rocking through there. Surprisingly, the AT gun um, a bit earlier was not taking that much damage from the mortar round. Not exactly sure why. Mortar managed to take out this AT gun over here. And so the... Um, Americans and the PE are in quite a stalemate. They've just got everything out. They've got armored cars, they've got mortars, mortar half tracks, they've got light ATs, whilst the Americans have snipers, they've got riflemen, they've got greyhounds, they've got AT guns, and what the heck are you supposed to do? Well, I'm not exactly sure. Look at the points right now, this just emphasizes the point that it's quite a stalemate. 411 for the PE, 378 for the Americans. Taking a look at what is being um, selected in terms of doctrinal choices, the Black Tiger has gone for Scorched Earth. That's why he has the Hummel right now, and I believe one might have been built. There we go, it's just a way to be firing. Can we find out where it's going to be shooting? Yes, it's going to be firing over here, near that, oh my god, medic station. One shell, almost taking it out, and there you go, two shells, taking out an entire medic station. I didn't know that the medic stations were so vulnerable to Hummel fire. I think that's quite excessive in a way um, that two shells would be required to take it out, but fair enough. I suppose it's only a little tent, isn't it? Um, so let's take a look at what Ghost Division has. He has gone for Luftwaffe, and so he can get that Luftwaffe ground forces, which will be able to f put down Flak, Vierlings, and also the, uh, the gigantic Flak. The flak that can kill basically everything on the field and shoot um, across oceans. Uh, we've also got, let's take a look at Piss Midget. He has the Armor Doctrine. I uh, haven't really seen much from that. So he's, got, he's got Allied War Machine selected, but still haven't really seen much in terms of his uh, doctrinal abilities. Also, we've got P CP saving up for Train Reborn. He has not decided what he wants yet. And fair enough, I'm not exactly sure what to expect either. Um, so, the armored cars are firing away here, mortar half tracks just trying to stop the riflemen from moving on in. We've also got Sticky Bomb just about to take this um, vehicle out, and so it has. Likewise, the Martyr 3 is taking some fire... not really, the Luftwaffe are taking some fire. <laughs> that seems more like it, and a grenade going down. No magic to do anything. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. So, lots of action. And that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> shells everywhere. And stuff is going back and forward in hands. Well, I think let's talk about something a little bit non-relevant to Company Heroes, I suppose. Let's talk about something else. Well, just before I do, there's a Calliope barrage coming down. <laughs> Fair enough. Um... Well, let's see, in my last replay, obviously uh, my last replay was about a week ago, and obviously I'm a bit sorry about the delay um, in actually bringing out these casts. I'm not going to be stopping cast if you guys have been worrying about that. And I was actually most supposed to mention this at the beginning of the replay. But um, but yeah, in my last replay I obviously mentioned that, uh, that I was going to be having to do some resets, some exams, and I would have to be studying for them. And that's what's been happening. On Monday I had an exam, yesterday I had an exam. And, you know, they went okay. I'm hopefully, uh, I'm pretty sure that I've passed, so that is all that's important to me. 
and I've just got one more next week which is a practical and so after that I will be obviously dishing out these uh, replays as like a train like a, uh, like <laughs> like a manufacturing line I would just be pumping these out probably not on a daily basis but maybe every day every other day perhaps daily on some occasions um, just really have to see I think I still got a month or so of summer vacation left after um, after my exam is done next week so I can't wait till that is over and also on a side note just how I was feeling about just how I was feeling about things in my last replay I've, I was very very surprised by the amount of response that I got from people I just I, I just couldn't believe like I wasn't even sure that I should have posted that replay and I just couldn't believe that so many people have actually in a way felt the same um, maybe not right now but in the past and it's just sort of comforting and reassuring to know that other people out there are like actually feel the same sort of stuff um, I can just confirm with you guys that I feel fine now uh, I've gotten quite used to my girlfriend being gone I've, I mean I actually got used to it within a day and you know life seems a little bit uh, better especially after doing some exams and feeling that I was gonna pass uh, that I was gonna do well so back to the game we've got loads of Calliope's two of them and it's gonna be absolutely perfect well we've been seeing these Calliope barrages are just damaging these ghost division uh, ghost divisions uh, and probably probably uh, the other ASI players armored cars as well and obviously these armored cars armored cars they're lightly armored and so they take damage very very easily from bullets from rockets from uh, shells and so these Calliope's are going to be so harassed especially two of them and their widespread and number of uh, rockets are going to be doing so much damage against these against these lightly armored um, vehicles and so what the heck is Black Tiger going to do? He's going to repair tanks. I'm not exactly sure if he has advanced repair. He needs advanced repair if he's going to be able to actually repair these uh, vehicles at a, a sustainable rate. Otherwise, the Luftwaffe could actually repair. But then again, where the heck are the Luftwaffe? I've got no idea. But they've in fact actually built a Flak 36 AT uh, slash AA, so anti-aircraft as well. So that is going to be firing right across the map, as I said, fighting, uh, firing across oceans, and that is going to be damaging the train station over here with that has an MG in it. Not looking good for the MG in there. He's taking fire very close range. However, he is managing to actually stay alive for quite a while. Grenade actually missing all the action of those PGs, and the Calliope Barrage taking out loads of vehicles. What we saw was an Armada go down. We saw another vehicle go down. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but just constantly... Um, Pounding this area with missiles and rockets just absolutely obliterating what vehicles are over there. So the PE taking losses over here whilst the PE are actually pushing in on these points on the center side. The uh, Americans have 328 VP points whilst the PE have 378. Still quite a stalemate. This is really up for anyone actually grabbing this. The Kent Crad is moving on in there to be revealed by the sniper, but is also revealing the sniper at the same time. Love seeing that sort of stuff. Perhaps he was doing that so that the MP44s could close in eventually and take it out, but it looks like what he was doing was actually just chasing it away. Uh, the Rifleman actually surprisingly not revealing that Kent Crad, um, not even trying to bother to find it. So the Kent Crad is out of there, or actually just pretty much still there and just scouting. <laughs> We've got a verbal vent also unlocked by Ghost Division from the Luftwaffe and it is out in the field. Gonna be sort of like an armored car. It's like an armored car slash uh, Ostvind and that is gonna be great at taking on uh, taking on the infantry and killing them however it needs to actually close in if it's gonna do anything. I'm not exactly sure why he's not doing that and the PG squad just managing to get the heck on out of there Good, 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 good. Love to see that sort of stuff. Come on, Verbal Vin, get the heck on in there. I'm not exactly sure why he's not doing that. Maybe he's afraid that there's an AT gun. No idea. These mortar. Oh my god. These mortar half tracks taking a lot of damage. They really, really need to move. This is one of the things. If there's going to be a Calliope on the field or a Humo or any sort of artillery, what well, you got to do with stationary units like. Um, say mortar half tracks or stukas for example is you got to move them 
just occasionally every now and then to just what the heck to just uh, avoid fire oh my god we have the americans capture the flak 36 over here just out of nowhere i was like how the heck did that mortar half trick just die well it was the freaking american rifleman that managed to capture it turn it around on one of the half tracks damage it and then take a side armor shot into this martyr very bad position for the oh my god the PE badly damaged uh, flak 36 come on one more shot no not managing to do that we have two Panthers coming out from the Panther battle group managing to actually destroy their own flak 36 how unfortunate that the flak 36 had to be built then conquered by the captured by the Americans then turned around on the PE to actually destroy one of their mortar half tracks and injure their uh, martyr so now we've got two panthers on the field however what the heck is going to happen well it looks like the americans have actually gone for their tank destroyers we have a allied war machine up on the field also field repairs not exactly sure why both of them were activated uh switching on over to piss midget um he activated both of them i think he must have activated uh field repairs first and then thought oh cr Oh jeez, maybe I shouldn't have uh, activated that. Maybe I should have activate, activated my uh, uh, Allied War Machine. Might have been a mistake. But what he has done is spent a load of munitions. That's 150 plus 200, 350 in total for both of those. I wouldn't have recommended that. What he has managed to do is take out the Homo, but he has lost both of his uh, tank destroyers, which I believe both of them have been gotten back for free. Maybe. Maybe one. Maybe not the other. No. Okay, well, oh, it looks like I only see one on the field. Um, so at least he got one of them back. And so that's very good from Allied War Machine. So what he should have done, obviously, was get that Allied War Machine up rather than the field repairs. Field repairs do it when you're not against uh, such such uh, odd circumstances, I suppose. <laughs> um, if you've got two two uh, tank destroyers versus two Panthers, not, pr not worth it using the field repairs because they're still pretty much guaranteed to be destroyed. Um, these this tank destroyer obviously being way too bold and being destroyed by these Panthers and so the Panthers have managed to achieve veterancy one on both of them um, and also they're very very badly damaged they need to be careful this Greyhound just try to be harassive do something maybe it's gonna put down a mine no no, it's not. It's that it's going to get destroyed and give veterancy for the Panthers. Okay, fair enough. Well, the Greyhound actually came out of the um, off-map combat group from Train Reborn, I believe. Yes, Train Reborn. So that means he's gone for his infantry doctrine. Pretty cool that he's going to be going for that, but quite a late choice to be actually doing that. Uh, fair enough. Um, got to see what comes out of that. Maybe he's going to go for Rangers. Maybe he's going to go for a Howitzer. Probably not a Howitzer. I don't imagine that would be a great option since uh, Calliope is already out in the field. But then again, maybe he's going to want some more uh, pow pow power from the uh, artillery on the field. But then again, Rangers maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, loads of battling happily happening down here. Just a rifleman charging right on in, and the verbal vent being taken out. It didn't look like it actually managed to do much. Now I've actually got a load of respect for riflemen. Ever since um, I started watching the, uh, actually a few days ago, I started watching the Pacific, the the TV show, uh, the series, and it's 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 very great um, uh, TV show. I, I just absolutely love it. I've watched a bit of Band of Brothers in the past. Um, haven't actually watched all of it. But I noticed that the, the uh, Pacific was actually free on BT Vision. And so I decided to watch all of it. And it's it's very great. You get a really good appreciation of just what the what the Americans must have gone through. Um, also the Japanese, obviously. But the Americans and how... It, just all these explosions and seeing your men die around you. And just constantly charging into the inevitable. It's just absolutely horrible to see. Or even imagine going through that. And so I've got a bit of more of appreciation of actually what the uh, men must have gone through. And so it was pretty cool just seeing that these... Uh, riflemen on the field just charging on in doing the best they can knowing that a few of them are probably gonna die and it's just such a shame but it's pretty cool if you look at that from a more morbid um outlook of the game or perspective i suppose you could say so the americans are winning this fight they've got loads more uh, men on the field if we're looking at the tactical map look at that 
Uh, switch on over to, say, ASII. Here we go. It doesn't look like as much as what they used to have. I mean, they're quite limited on what they uh, what they have on the field. They're really depending on the few remaining vehicles and the Luftwaffe to actually repair these pa uh, Panthers up. Obviously, the Luftwaffe can repair at an advanced repair rate. We've also got the uh, full Sherm Jaegers with their... Oh god, I always have a problem remembering these <laughs> gun names. Is it the full Fug? Fug? Maybe? <laughs> Maybe? Uh, but yeah, they have those, those um, guns out and so they're going to be very good against anti-infantry. But the men being chased away by the tank destroyer, surprisingly, and the tank destroyer being taken out as if nothing happened. That tank destroyer is just so... They're so paper armor, you gotta be really, really careful. You gotta send them in in numbers, or just do drive-by shots, basically. Get them on out of there, do a bit of damage, get them the heck on out of there. 34 minutes of the game, 321 points for the PE, 315 for the Americans, still up for anyone winning this. We've got uh, Scorched Earth on the points, come on! Why is it not exploding? I've got no idea. There we go, exploding after a very, very long delay, wow. Fair enough, the Rifleman had plenty of time to actually respond to that. And so, what we have is the Calliope's just firing away over here, just trying to manage to do some sort of damage. And the damage is coming down on the Panthers, but the Panthers already, look at that, just loads of, uh, loads of veterancy. Veterancy too, that is just so hard to deal with, they're going to be getting those uh, armored skirts and all that great stuff that you get with veterancy. And it's going to be so hard to combat. So, the... what else is going on the field? Do 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 Hmm. Hmm <laughs> hmm Well, it just seems like both uh, players are trying to get back in on the fight. It's just such a stalemate. You really have no clue who's going to win this. Calliope is just constantly harassing. Uh, the PE have such great veterancy and such great amount of units. Uh, diversity. But then again, look at the Americans, three snipers are just going to nullify anything that the Americans can, or the PE even throw out in terms of men. Veterancy 3 on one of these snipers, how many kills? He's got 34 <laughs> kills, that just speaks for itself. Uh, 15 kills on Veterancy 2 sniper and 12 kills on another one. Another tank destroyer going down, these tank destroyers are being lost needlessly, I have to say. Um, they could definitely expect expand their lifetime a bit better if the micro is a bit better and also if they were grouped up and also using allied war machine only sacrifice your vehicles if you've got allied war machine that is the general rule of thumb Clypey just preventing this uh, VP from being captured and just loads of ties changing we've got fighting occurring on this side we've got fighting occurring over here oh my god it, let's just take another panoramic view and see what it actually looks like right across this battlefield um, god, these trees are in the way... Here we go. Here we go. And so you can see right across the field that what is going on. Obviously a bit difficult to actually see what it is, but you can just see the amount of, uh, scale. Just men everywhere on the field. We've got artillery happening in the distance. And so it's kind of scenic in a way to be actually looking at the game like that. So, who am I going to be preventing these riflemen from catching, capturing the munitions point? We've got 51 out of 48 population cap for the PE. Very bad um, situation to be in when you've uh, overmaxed your population cap. It's one thing to actually reach the max, but when you're once you're over, that means you've got to actually lose units in order to um, get back down to your maximum. Not a great position. Obviously, he had. Obviously what happened was that uh, he had so many men on the field and then losing a strategic point meant that his population cap went down and that's just such a bad position to be in. The Americans trying to just do something whilst the PE are actually just fending off and so this point is most likely going to be recaptured in the hands of the Americans or the PE should I say. Whilst the Americans are capturing away over here, look at the population cap about to go down. Oh my god, down to 42! And this one's going to be taken as well, along with most likely the VP. No, it looks like we have an art sector artillery being activated on the area over here. This uh, rifleman squad taking five casualties in that squad, and a bunch of guys being damaged over here. Oh my 
God. Sector artillery, obviously very expensive. 200 ammunition to use, but as you guys can see, very effective in actually holding a pl uh, place off. So at least that point was not captured, but look at that. The maximum, uh, the pop cap is 42. Oh my God, not good, not good. These uh, PE are so brilliant at avoiding these grenades in this game, or maybe the rifle or the Americans are just not great at lobbing them. Who knows? The PE have just managed to basically dodge every single grenade thrown by the Americans in this game. Uh, perhaps by chance, but also by just uh, skill of micro. Mines on the field, computer for P preventing any uh, forward movement, and so the Calliope's are behind this building, and it looks like the center is pretty much in the control of the Americans. However, the P still have loads of stuff on the field. They've got Panthers, Veteran C2, they've got Mortar half tracks like of Homos, they've got PGs. It's really hard to uh, actually know what's going to happen in this game. The PE have managed to actually recapture the points over here, and they've got four Sherman Jaegers, which are going to be defending the area um, on this side. And just uh, you've got to really start thinking like. Uh, how are the PE going to get back into the fight? Well, very good decision. They're going to be getting the full stream makers over here to actually take out the Veteran C2 AT gun. These are going to be taken out. Whilst we also got some action going on over here. What do you want to focus on? I'm really not too sure, guys. But let's see what's going to happen here because it's going to be a lot more action. Oh, God. The Calliope is uh, damaging the uh, Panthers. Luckily, not too much. However, we've got Allied War Machine and Field Repairs activated for the Tank Destroyers, which uh, I believe one Tank Destroyer is just about to go down. However, it is it still has enough health to stay alive. This Tank Destroyer is taken out, but uh, there we go. That Tank Destroyer is gone. Uh, that was a futile attempt for the Americans to actually do anything. They managed to damage the uh, Panther quite severely. However, the Luftwaffe from the field will easily get it back up to speed. Also, Veteran C3 on both these Panthers. Whilst we also have a Hummel that is still alive, those tech destroyers done nothing. Absolutely nothing. Whilst the Full Stream Jaegers moved along on the right hand side and managed to take out, I believe, both of those AT guns. Also got a Hummel shooting over here, just trying to take out the medic station because the medic station is obviously the thing that is bringing back zombie rifleman squads and that is the last thing you want in this uh, sort of game. You gotta obviously delay your opponent from uh, getting those things out. Machine gun emplacement, gonna be protecting this VP, very very good choice uh, by the Americans to do something like that. However, if there's gonna be no AT gun support, then yes there is some AT gun support, that's fine. Okay, good. Because I was going to say, if there's no AT gun support, obviously the Panthers can move in and take them out. Riflemen trying to capture Wade along the right hand side. I believe they might be trying to go for a VP victory if they're going to be going straight for the VPs. Uh, 216 for the uh, PE. And this is such a hard position to be in because sector artillery, 200 ammunition. The PE only have 188 costs so much, obviously it's very effective, uh, but costs so much to use, they obviously can't use it all the time. They need to actually, actually, uh, actually have units on the field to take them on. So as you guys can see, the Foshi <laughs> Makers are going in and out of camouflage. Um, it's just a passive sort of camouflage. Whenever they're in cover, they get the camouflage. Um, and they're not firing, so they're going in and out of it. And so that very good to be actually seeing that. It just means that they're hard to kill. Uh, if they're going to be going camouflage. Pershing out on the field! Oh my god, I'm predicting possibly the demise of the Panthers here. Oh my god, I really hope I do not see that. But looks like that's going to happen for this one. One Veteran C3 Panther going down. One is still alive. However, such badly damaged. Come on! Where is the Luftwaffe on the field? We've got, um... Oh god, what is it called again? We've got the planes, the planes, the... The Henschel! The Panzernacker! Uh, support coming out. Oh my god, that is just exactly what he needed. Good job. Good job by the PE to actually uh, bring out that uh, the Henschel, Henschel uh, AT support to actually take out that Pershing in just such a desperate need, uh, such a desperate time. So at least that uh, one Panther is still alive. I wish they brought it out a little bit sooner so that uh, other Panther could have managed to stay alive as well. But this is such a... Oh god, not looking good for the P. We've got Calliope brushes harassing the actual bases of the PE. It looks like a building must have gone down because I believe there were more earlier. Uh, this uh, Panther is getting repaired and another Pershing is on the field. Oh god, this is just... Uh, well, that wasn't even from Allied War Machine, I believe. I believe that must have been from uh, just saving up manpower. Uh, switching all over to Piss Midget. You look at that, he's got so much manpower. Uh, oh god, even if this one was destroyed, he could easily call on another one onto the field. 
just nothing that a PE can do now. Nothing. I mean, you've got the uh, the Henschel, the Panzernacker, uh, that could obviously you know do some damage, but the Henschel obviously isn't going to be enough to destroy a Pershing. Um, the PE have nothing. I I'm sorry, that's all. The PE have absolutely nothing now. Uh, they don't have enough manpower, I believe, to actually afford some uh, some more Panther battle groups. Uh, the the Pershing is here. Even if it gets destroyed, another one could be called onto the field immediately. And so that is it. One, uh, six, seven points left for the P. 297 for the Americans. It's just so unfortunate to be seeing the P go down like this. It put up such a great fight in the beginning. <coughs> and they were just tip top on shape, um, bringing out the every single counter as soon as possible. Uh, but instead, what we saw was. Um, <coughs> Instead, what we saw was the uh, PE being moved back uh, bit by bit. The cl uh, AT guns first, uh, destroying some of the armored vehicles. <coughs> um, then it was just it's bit by bit the P were going down. Clyde P's eventually destroying some of the armored vehicles, damaging them, constantly harassing them. And it was so awkward for them, such a bad position. And so I believe the only fault that the P had was that. They had a few opportunities where they could have moved in along the left hand side whilst all the battling was here. And they could have possibly moved in some armored cars and entered this game early by moving those armored cars into the game. Into the uh, bases, should I say. Um, but then again, the PE, you know, losing some of their units bit by bit, I'm not really sure where they went wrong. They eventually just started getting pushed back. Um, Maybe it was unit preservation. Maybe you guys could tell me where they went wrong. But the Americans just did such a great job encountering. They had just constant zombie squads, just constant riflemen. Uh, the snipers obviously are a huge factor in this. I mean, if we saw the kills, I bet the, uh, the, the combined kills of all three snipers are probably ranging almost up to uh, 100 by now. And so yeah, that obviously is going to put a very huge dent. Likewise, the Americans... Uh, Loads of tanks and loads of munitions to spend on their armor doctrine, and also loads of calliopes, and it's just too much to uh, to deal with. And so we've got Black Tiger dropping out of the game. Obviously, recognizing defeat is at their doorstep, and that's Ghost Division gone as well. So I pretty much summarized the uh, both the teams and what they could have done. Hope you guys enjoyed this replay, and until next time, uh, hopefully sometime soon. I'll see you guys later. So have, have a very, very nice day, and until then, bye-bye.